Hi guys, it's Renisti back again with another FHM video. This time we're in Season 10, Episode 5, documenting Barry McCogner's rise to the NHL and eventually his Stanley Cup ring going on his finger. It's going to happen. We'll make it happen. Now we got 13 games left in our second season of the DEL. We are top of the German top flight for now, but... We were fantastic last episode. Let's hope that we can carry this momentum into this one and solidify our spot at the top of German ice hockey. Game number one, we're playing against Bad Noheim away. Start off with a win. Nice. This is our lines for the second game of the episode against Köln at home. And we continue to win. Four to three in regulation. Next game up, we're in Krefeld. Let's continue the momentum. Woo! Another four-goal game from the nearly million-dollar man, Leon Hamann. Be a bit more consistent with it and we'll be good. But 7-6, a goal fest that ended with us winning overtime. Three improvements and a single regression on our February 2033 development report. Next game up, we're playing Augsburg at home. Can we continue with the winning streak? Good Lord. Moritz Bossa with a hattie. Jesus. Eight to four. Wow. These are our lines against Lanschut at home. Do we continue the winning streak? Oh my God. Five nothing shutout. My energy is through the roof. Jesus. These are our lines against Munich away. Do we extend the winning streak again? And we get blanked five to nothing after winning a game five nothing recently if it wasn't last game. Huh, Teddy Stiga, man, you got our number. You wanna sign for us later? Jesus Christ. These are the lines against Iserlun. Can we get back to our winning ways? And we do. Leon Hamann plays a role in the win. Two goals and an apple. Nice. We're back to the 20-man lineup against Mannheim at home. Six to three win. Boom. Shaylen Gopher broke his damn neck. Oh my god. What the hell happened to him? This poor guy. No. I'm not. As much as I wanted to, I'm not delaying the treatment for Shaylen Gopher because if he breaks his neck again, he's 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 toast. He's toast. And as amazing as he's been. I trust our defense enough where if we go that far, we can get the job done with him in the press box. These are the lines against Eisbach in Berlin. Can we continue our winning ways? He lost to a DEL2 team, basically. <laughs> Whatever. Next game up, we're playing Dusseldorf away. We win in the shootout. Not ideal. We got two points. First team that hit 100 points in this league, Ingolstadt. I don't believe a single team did it last year, so that shows the disparity between top and bottom compared to last season. Development report. Couple plus twos for Scott and Meyer. Hallman, plus one agility. That's always good. And Dylan Rowley, defensive read plus one. Defense, poke check, minus one. Acceleration, minus one for the 32-year-old. Surprise, surprise. This game against Betzikheim is huge. And I say this for two reasons. One, if we win, regardless if it's in regulation or overtime, shootout, whatever, any win, we mathematically clinch a Champions Hockey League spot for next season, which was the objective. And to get that done with about three games to spare would be fantastic. There's two more after this, I just realized. Also... Ingolstadt is our last opponent of the season. We're neck and neck with them in the standings. And if we want to leapfrog them, this has to be a win. And we blew it. Who the hell is this? Matej Kubisa scores four on us. Four goals. Giel is finally back from his injury. It's a huge add. This is a must-win game if we want to potentially get the regular season title and clinch the number one seed. We would absolutely have to win this game and beat Ingolstadt no matter what to do it. But I have faith in our guys. Let's go! 
101 points. Look at that freaking record, baby. Six to four. Let's go. Matthew Almeida's out with shoulder soreness. Christ almighty. So before we go to this game against Ingolstadt, let's take a look at what's at stake here. Of course, they have a three-point lead over us. If this game goes to overtime, shootout, whatever you want to call it, by default, they clinch the title. We are in second place. Or even worse, Red Bull could leapfrog us and we can go to third. Third is the worst possible scenario for us. But for Ingolstadt, they have 12 or 14 more goals than we do in terms of goal difference. We actually have the most goals scored in the entire league, but their defense has been out of this world. They've shut everybody down. So I don't know what tiebreaker hold, holds more value in this league. If it's regulation wins, we have it. So we'll see. In the biggest regular season game of Barry's whole career. You know what? We're playing this one. Regardless of the outcome, a championship will be awarded on this ice today. We're on the power play early. It's dumped. And Gustav breaks. Shot goes wide. Epperson shoots and scores. Wow. Epperson gets a shorthanded goal. Assisted by Ogbekele and Gavin Poole. Just what we needed. What a joke of a penalty kill we have. My God. Poole in on a breakaway and he scores. He dangles, or not even a breakaway, he dangled around the defenseman. And that's his 30th goal, or sorry, third goal of the whole season. Wow. Yeah, we, uh, we're no match for these boys. Ed Schaefer puts us down a man for two. Connor Faustin gets called for tripping. <laughs> Let's go! Trey Peterson, 18th of the season, assisted by Eric Scott and Jeffrey Roth. We're back in this hockey game. Julian Lutz doubles their lead, and we're back to being down by two. Damn it, man. Epperson gets one for Ingolstadt, and we're down four to one. And another goal, Easton Schlunda. This is by Quinn McKenzie and Julius Kerr. We lose 5 1 to Ingolstadt. They are the regular season champions. We wait to see what happens with Red Bull Munich and if we either are second or third. We stay at second place. Nice. At least, at least we got that. It's a shame, though. We were so close. Best coach nominees. Barry McCockiner, Mark French, what a name, and Ula Stiller of Kuhn. My guess is that Mark French will probably get it because Ingolstadt was the number one team. Manager of the... Are you freaking serious right now? Are you serious? Brother. <laughs> what? Hold on. So you mean to tell me I revamp an entire offensive core? I had four guys who came back, maybe five max. I brought in eight new faces, three on the back end, I think, or two. And we go from seven or no, eighth to second? And that's not worthy of manager of a year nomination? Kiss my ass. Kiss my back end, bro. This is a joke. Rookie of the year, Oliver Mueller, Robert Hartman, and Torben Steffen. Nobody on our team. Defenseman of the year, Matthew Almeida. Yeah, he was good. Niels Heitman was really good. Spencer Gill. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure it was a Flyers draft pick in real life not too long ago. And then Ozzels. Noak and Michael Simpson. Again, where the hell is Defensa? He 
absolutely deserved the nomination this year. He got one last year. Such BS. An MVP. This one I, I understand. Griva, Kubesa, and Mateko. Yeah, fine. Jeffrey Roth, just before playoffs, has been involved in an off-ice incident that has pissed off five of his teammates. Christ almighty. Cue my maniacal laughter. <laughs> We're playing Mannheim again. We got a rematch. They beat Krimicho as the ninth seed, beating the eighth seed. And Landschutz playing, I believe, um, Ingolstadt? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure, but somehow we're playing Mannheim, even though in theory it should be Ingolstadt. Well, whatever, I don't care how this works. We know who our opponent is, that's what matters. But we're not going to play them just yet. That's it, that's all guys. Thank you very much for watching a great second regular season in Germany for Barry McCockiner and his road to the Stanley Cup. If you enjoy content like this, please remember to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next round.